let's settle this once and for all. Yes, in fact, interest groups are trash. We're going to dive into why this is not actually an arguable point at all. Diving into the history, the impact, using business objectives. And the really important part here is this has been a hot take. However, after years of being wrong and having to evolve my opinion, and honestly, Facebook evolving, it has been several years now where there is no empirical data to deny the fact that interest groups are objectively trash for your business. And we're going to dive into this as a CMO, investment banker, and brand builder way more than as a media buyer, because ultimately the ego of your media buyer shouldn't tank the results of your business anymore. So first off, why do we use audiences? You know, a lot of the most common thinking was, well, audiences do targeting. That's where I say, hey, ads, go and target these people. But that's just not the case in any way. As a matter of fact, what really happens is every ad creates its own audience and effectively makes its own lookalike audience. Again, not an arguable fact because Facebook knows, just like every optimized CPM platform, who wants to see your content. So it's not that you're randomly getting served impressions against an audience. It's that those people are who you've chosen to allow Facebook to show your ad to, regardless of whether or not those people want to see your content. And ultimately, Facebook knows who wants to see your content. And most importantly, their user experience is the lifeblood of their business model. So if you're not aligned with that, you're going to lose every single time. So let's do a little bit of a history lesson here. Interest groups were introduced back in 2012 as Facebook's answer to Google's affinity audiences. Now this was done because Facebook was the ugly redheaded stepchild in the corner that nobody wanted to ever trust or use. So they made it really, really easy for people on the dominant platform, Google, to come over and use all of those audiences. This brought many new marketers to the platform. And since then, many new innovations have been made on Facebook. Innovation is actually at the core of Facebook's business model and their development strategy. So every time we're investing more efforts into automated rules or CBO or the metaverse or reels on Instagram, everything else you have to remember, that is code that is not being updated in, in interest groups. And they haven't been updated in years. One of the biggest misconceptions about interest groups is that they're accurate. Multiple studies have come out, most recently, even just in April of 2022, saying that on average, over one third of everybody in an interest group was put there incorrectly. Also, being in an interest group has nothing to do with sentiment. Just as many or more people talk smack about something they don't like as much as they do say positive things about they do like. How many times have you been to a restaurant when their service is bad? You talk about it all the time. So let's say half of the people in that audience actually don't like the thing that you're talking about and one third of that audience shouldn't even be there. That means 65, 66, 67 cents of every single dollar you spend is a harmful impression. One of the biggest arguments for interest groups is, well, we see better results. Now, let's be honest. Better results is a very subjective term that almost always is backed by no contextual data other than what the platform shows in that exact moment. Why does that happen? Well, smaller audiences give a better, more focused uh, approach to low-hanging fruit. However, that low-hanging fruit runs out really quick. And that creates instability. While you're also paying higher to reach that inventory, which dramatically increases the churn rate and cost of that inventory, which is why your ads and your ad sets are dying really quickly. When you use interest groups to get better results, you're actually just destroying your future for an unsustainable rising cost right now. And that's terrible business. Why is that a bad thing above and beyond being terrible for business? Well, machine learning requires data and will improve over time. 
So as CPMs rise, because remember, you're forcing bad impressions on people because you want to focus two thirds of your money on the people that have no interest in what you're talking about. You'll get unstable results that will not scale. And when you do try to scale, those results die. How many times have you seen that happen? When we use interest groups, we effectively designate ourselves as a liability to the stability of our own results and our relationship with Facebook. This also requires way more work to maintain, requiring way more ads to find new people. So you're basically saying, I want to be a bad business partner for less stable results that ultimately generate harm in the growth of my business. That's bad thinking. Paid media is designed to amplify good business, not be the source of your revenue. If you say, I've got a great business, all I need is customers and marketing, when your business fails, it won't be Facebook's fault. Now, when you are using a bunch of different ads and a bunch of different audiences, driving a bunch of different people into your store, what you're also doing is creating a bunch of different customer journeys for a bunch of people that all have different objections and behave in completely different ways. Now, while you might get better results for a temporary piece of time on Facebook, what you're ultimately doing is making it way more difficult for everybody else on the team after the click to improve. Conversion rates, landing page tests, LTV, upsell take rates, etc. those sets become far less effective due to the lower data integrity. So your effort to look good and boost your ego on something that gives you better results actually makes the rest of your team way weaker, and that's bad teamwork. Quick recap here. Interest groups are relatively old technology. They haven't been updated in years. They're getting deprecated by the thousands on a pretty regular basis. Plus, they're not accurate. They cost extra money to use. They raise your CPMs across your entire account for all advertising. They create more instability and way more work and make business operations after the click way more difficult to improve. Which, remember, a good business scales an ad account, not the other way around. So basically, using interest groups has no definitive upside for your business when it comes to e-commerce. Broad, on the other hand, fixes literally every single one of those problems so that you never have to face them ever again. Let's wrap it up here with a few extra notes. No interest group has ever improved the LTV of the customer. It just doesn't happen. I've literally spent hundreds of millions of dollars. My students and clients have driven billions in revenue. Haven't seen it once. Broad lets the ads find the best impressions by saying anybody that wants to see this and that will respond positively is allowed to. I will not pay a premium to prevent the system from working the way it was designed to. And we're gonna get way more consistent curated customer journeys for a lot cheaper. Remember, a good business actually scales an ad account. It's not the other way around. And stable results that help brands grow is the best way to scale your business. So ultimately, instead of boosting your ego on what works, be a team player and crush.